lot of people think that maybe Chalk Soul was a social enterprise idea or that I'm a chocolatier, which I'm not. I was initiated to chocolate making by a Zapotec grandmother in 2003 because she asked me to use the solar concentrator that I was building to roast cacao so she could make her great grandmother's traditional drinking chocolate. Doña Jacinta was the mother of one of the sharecroppers who was working my mentor Gustavo's land growing squash beans and corn in San Pablo Etla, Oaxaca, Oaxaca, Mexico. So Doña Jacinta, what we did was she brought me to the market, we bought red cacao, we bought white cacao, we brought, you know, fermented cacao, we brought cinnamon, we bought almonds, and then we went back to her home and she showed me how she was roasting that cacao on the comal, which is the traditional kind of earthen pot. And it was a lot of work and it was not too different than coffee roasting except way lower temperatures. So I took that knowledge that she introduced me to on how to buy the cacao and how to toast the cacao. And I used my solar roaster. We, we did a very luckily good first roast and we made chocolate with Doña Jacinta back in 2003 in November. And I remember being totally amazed at how the solid cacao beans went into the grinder and came out as a liquid. And I remember making that chocolate and being so surprised that it didn't taste like a Hershey's bar. In fact, I didn't really like it at all. But Christmas came and went and I found myself still making chocolate. And this time I was making it with the other students of the University of La Tierra because everybody wanted to eat our chocolate and drink our coffee, but nobody really wanted to buy our weird prototype solar technology. So over the course of the first six months of 2004, we realized that chocolate making was a medium for our message. That is to say, it was a way to embody our hopes for a more ecological and regenerative approach to food and community. And that's how I was initiated to chocolate making. And so I turned all of my skills as a researcher and a learner onto researching everything I could about cacao and chocolate. And I based that research upon the, the previous research of my mentor, Gustavo Esteva, who had done a lot of work on Sin Maiz Noy País and was the founder of that movement in, in Mexico. And that is to say, looking at the role that a symbolic and traditional food like maize, or in this case, cacao, can play in cultural, ecological, and community regeneration. And economics is not, not part of that. It's just economics is not the main being and sole focus of that. Economics, as Gustavo used to always say, is being put back into its rightful place. That is to say, a marginal one. And I like to use that concept of the marginal uh, role of economics as in the buildings that we construct, the pillars of those buildings are at the margins and they hold up the edifice. They just don't form the main beam of what it is that we're doing or why we're doing it. So economics is a very important element of making a dignified living, but it's not the sole reason or way in which we make a dignified living. And so the initiation that I had to chocolate making was from this traditional Zapotec grandmother, but in the context of foods and social movements and foods coming from a community level, not solely reducible to approach that was about economics.